Right, so we are here at Kensington Olympia Station in this rather rainy weather. Um, and in this video, um, I'm going to be asking a question. Um, how many stations are there in the suburb of Kensington? Um, now, the answer is actually 10 stations. Um, and I'm saying 10 because I'm not, I'm not counting um, Kensington and Chelsea, which is the borough. Um, I'm only counting the stations which are in the suburb of Kensington. So I've set up uh, ground rules for this video. So one is um, um, the stations which are in the suburb of Kensington, that is one. Um, two, if any stations which border um, the suburb count, sir. Um, and three, any station which is not located in the suburb of Kensington, but half the suffix of Kensington, I'll count it. So here I am at Kensington Olympia. So um, the station opened um, in the 1860s um, as Kensington Addison Road Station. Okay, so the station was renamed to Kensington Olympia in 1869. Um, and, and the station has three platforms. Um, and you got two platforms here. And you even got um, a bay platform here, which is for the, um, for the district line. Um, more specifically, the Olympia shuttle. Um, so, um, this bay platform here is used for the Olympia shuttle of the District Line. And uh, this is the this is one of only four stations on the tube, which only has a single platform. Um, so, there's this one here, and the others being Chesham, Heathrow Terminal 4, and Mill Hill East. Um, and the station also serves a venue known as, if I just take you to this sign here, Olympia London. Um, which is quite badly worn out on here on this on the signage uh, um, and actually if if I just take you to this garden here which is on the other platform that is actually wide enough for a fourth platform and, f and a fourth track and um, so I actually wish that um, so I'm gonna explain what this plan is to re to revive the this area of and the station overall so I plan to um, make the Olympia branch, the Wimbledon branch, and the Edgware Road branches of the district line um, get split from the district line and actually be turned into a new line known as the Kensington Line um, because it's named after Kensington Olympia and High Street Kensington uh, respectively. Um, and um, both of those stations are served by the district line. Um, and also, um, I would like to add a station on the Olympia branch known as West Cromwell Road um, in between Earl's Court and Olympia. Um, and also I want to add a Y-link um, between um, Olympia and West Brompton um, to provide a relief line for the overground. Um, and also I want the Kensington line to be extended up to Shepherd's Bush and actually have a fourth platform um, here. So just to um, not have a single track, which would be ridiculous for the branch line. All right, so Kensington Olympia is one of 17 stations on the TFL network to have these, um, a pink reader. Um, and what these do um, is that um, it would provide you a cheaper fare if you're uh, changing between modes of stations. So, um, so it would have um, Stratford, for example, if you're changing between the overground and other modes, like the Elizabeth Line, or the Jubilee Line, or the Central Line. Right, so a bit of history about the District Line here at Olympia is that um, back in 2011, um, its general weekday service um, was apparently axed um, for no reason at all. Um, but the District Line here only um, runs as a shuttle on the weekends, or if there's an event going on at Olympia London. But there are a few trains during the early morning and late evening um, which actually use the Olympia shuttle on a weekday. So 
That is cool. And it makes this bay platform feel rather abandoned. Yeah, and this is why that there's a sign here saying, if you want the District 9, take the overground and change at West Brompton. So rather than the uh, pocket of uh, flowers here, I, want, I just want to show you this. Up around there somewhere um, is Olympia London itself. Uh, and it's just an amazing building. All right, so um, we got plenty of time for our train. Um, and the next train on that, on the um, southbound platform, uh, that will be the southern service heading to East Croydon. Um, actually, Southern operate the cross-city service, um, or the West London service, as it's called, from uh, East Croydon up to Watford Junction. Uh, previously, they used to head up to Milton Keynes Central. However, that got axed last year, in May 2022. So, the next train heading north will be the Southern service, apparently. So, it's shown on the map in, like, black parallel lines here. This is one of the buildings here. And here's a big construction site for um, new apartments which will be built here. So here's the outside of Olympia Station. So apparently, whenever you travel on the Olympia Shuttle service from uh, High Street Ken, um, on the trains, rather than saying Kensington Olympia, uh, they just say it as Olympia. That's it. So. Alright, this problem is um, of like the name of the station is can actually be uh, seen on Google Maps uh, um, of all places. So if I just sh show you it on my phone, uh, you notice that um, on the map it actually just says Kensington, um, which is quite odd uh, um, on Google Maps uh, because the actual name is Kensington Olympia, but um, on the overground and southern trains, um, they say it has the full name, Kensington Olympia. Right, so if the district line, Kensington line, uh, would, would have ever been extended up to Shepherd's Bush to fill in that missing link uh, of the tube, um, it would unfortunately have to demolish the, the station shelter, um, which is not a station building, but a station shelter. Um, and that, that would be a big shame, and also the one on that side, uh, because just to have this branch line duplicated for the, for tube trains. And so the labyrinth is on the northbound platform, and it's number 129 in the sequence of 270.
All right. Um, so this is um, the Shepherd's Bush London Overground and National Rail Station. Um, and this opened in 2008 uh, uh, when construction started um, on the Westfield London Shopping Centre here. And it replaced the former station uh, that way, uh, known as Uxbridge Road. Uh, um, and that closed. Uh, all right, there is a side entrance there, but the main entrance is that yeah. way. All right, so I came here, um, um, first of all, to transfer to the um, London Underground oh, Central Line. All right, so the side entrance, which I mentioned, uh, um, is open from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., um, I think every day. All right, and we'll be heading up to the uh, Central Line station. So there are two separate stations, so uh, you have to leave uh, one gate line, so i.e. the central line, uh, cross the road and then enter the other gate line if you're transferring between the central line and the overground. But, yeah, and I'll show you why that is. And it's annoying that the stations are not conjoined. Because having a conjoined station here would be so much better, but unfortunately there isn't. You got a big information screen above the lifter, um, and you got a ticket machines here, and you got a convenience store, a ticket office, quite rare, and um, yeah, it's quite modern. All right, so here's the overground station building, and across the road there is the central line station building, and this is actually where I want the um, Olympia branch of the district line, the Kensington line. Um, to, where, to be extended to um, are with new cut and cover platforms and here you got Shepherd's Bush bus station and here's the bus for Boulder Spring and there's one for Camden Town and so um, down there is the Westfield Shopping Centre or Westfield London as it's called and I think that's the largest shopping centre in Western Europe and um, yeah, we're heading over to the uh, tube station and finally head under cover for this rain. Let's check it's pushed in the central line. And um, actually, um, you notice that the station building is actually quite modern. Um, well, that's because it is, because it actually replaced um, an old station building uh, that was designed by Harry Bell Measures, um, and when this, and when the new Westfield Shopping Centre came through here, um, unfortunately the old Harry Bell Measures building was demolished and was replaced by a modern one to reflect the area. Going into the cheap station now. If the Kensington line were to come here. Um, this wall here would be knocked down and would take you to, to a corridor which will take you to the um, new like, Kensington Line platform, so the Olympia branch of the District Line as it's now, as it's still called today. And you've got these rather unsafe stairs here, These should be replaced with, a, um, with more modern escalators. Alright, a bonus fact about uh, Shepherd's Bush Tube Station is you've got these steps here uh, which are 70 steps, uh, equivalent to a 15-storey building. Um, and then also, the labyrinth of the station is tucked in, in this little um, area right here. And it's number 130 in the sequence of 270. 272! Extend it to on a loop by Wood Lane Station, which is now abandoned. Uh, um, and um, when uh, White City Station opened, uh, Wood Lane Station on the Central Line closed. Uh, um, and this is why um, the Central Line platforms at White City are right hand running. Uh, This is the train we 
will get um, I'll be getting on to my next station which is Holland Park So we're at um, Holland Park station um, and um, here is quite unusual, it's a cavity of some sort. Um, but we're not here for that, we're here for the station. All right, and the station um, is quite um, unusual because it's quite like white uh, um, in a, or in a cream form. Uh, that's because um, this station was actually the last on the network to have signage and tiling from the 1950s. Um, and the station was refurbished um, with um, nice retro signs. Wow, that is so good. Yeah, and um, got much more modern roundings. So the next train is not due for a while, so we'll head up to the ticket hall. So um, one cool feature about the refurbishment is the light up box way outside, which actually works. That's cool. All right, so um, the spiral staircase here, um, which is that one, um, has 90 has 94 steps, uh, which is equivalent to a 15-story building. So we've got the labyrinth here, it's 132, sequence of 270. And these are the express lifts up to the uh, ticket hall. And so here's the ticket hall of Holland Park. Here's the ticket of Holland Park. It's quite beautiful. Here's the gate one. Quite a small one. Um, and here is the outside Holland Park Station. And um, it's named after Holland Park and it's also the name of the um, of the suburb to, uh, to the north of the station. And here's the station building uh, designed by Harry Bell Measures. And it's the original one from 1900. So that is cool. Yeah, and it is in the Royal Borough of Kensington, Chelsea. But it does border the suburb of Kensington, so I'm counting it. So. Right. I'm head back into the station now. Uh, via the stairs this time. So again, this is uh, 94 steps, which is equivalent to a 15-story building. Okay. And you even got a no exit sign dating from 1900 there. That's cool. Um, and then here you got the line map going to the eastbound.
Alright, we're in no trail there. My neck is straight. So we're at Notting Hill Gate Station and this station acts as an interchange between the Central, Circle and District Kensington line, sir. Um, and we're currently on the eastbound platform and actually here, the Central line platforms are superimposed, meaning one is, is on top of the other. Um, this is a really good platform. And the next train is in one minute for Paynolds Fire Newbury Park. Head up to the Circle Line station at Notting Hill Gate and I'll speed up the footage to save time in the video. Seven car S stops are much shorter than the length of the platform, so that's why the last coach cannot fit the full length. It only fits a six car train, reminiscent of C stop days. That's why the signs are there. See, the last coach doesn't fit the length of the platform. Yeah, and the subsurface platforms are beautiful. With a beautiful roof. And this is the next train is the one I'll take to my next station, which is High Street Ken. Street Ken Station, which is the junction to the um, uh, Edgeway Road Branch, the District Line, and the Circle Line. There's a Circle Line train for Edgeway Road. Yeah, and um, 
Yeah, actually, Circle and Trace, in order to get between here and um, Gloucester Road and South Kensington, um, trains use the Circle Line trains use the rather disputed Cromwell Curve. Um, and that was built, I think, when Earl's Court Station opened. But if I'm wrong, let me know. And, um, you notice you've got two um, extra platforms here. I'll explain what they are later. So apparently the entrance of High Street Kensington Station is um, located um, right at the shopping centre here because um, you have the Wrights Arcade, which is there, the Kensington Arcade, which is here, and then you have uh, Kensington High Street, which is down that way. And this is fabulous. Right, now we'll head back into the tube station to head to my next station, which will be South Kensington. Um, but first, there's something I have to show you here. Alright, so on the northbound platform of the Circle and District Kensington lines, um, and here um, are two extra platforms. So here's platform 3, and over there is platform 4. And these are actually used for the um, Olympia shuttle of the district line, or the Kensington line, as I'm, I'm still calling it. Um, and these get only used on the... Um, on, on early morning and late evenings of weekdays and um, on weekends and if there's a special event at Olympia. So you notice you have this platform here and then this um, the original platform there. Similar to Buchanan Street or Hillhead and I think Ibrox on Glasgow subway. And over there for district line trains they use the uh, right tracker and um, actually run into the right tunnel. For the circle line they continue left. Yeah, and the labyrinth is here um, on platform 3. It's 237, it's sequence of 270. 272! Right, and down there is where they were going to double the line, um, but that never happened. I suggest that should become a crossover. And in my opinion, I think that these platforms here should be used purely by circle line trains. And those ones there by district Kensington line trains. Actually, above platform 4 is a sign, a standalone sign, uh, for the circle line. That is just standalone. That's quite rare. I think that's the only one um, on the circle line. Alright, I'll be taking this train for two stops to South Kent. Gloucester Road, I'll be doing that towards Earl's Court. The beautiful and charming South Kensington station, uh, which has an interchange with the Piccadilly line. Um, and something interesting about the, um, um, a rather interesting announcement is played when you travel on the S stock trains as you approach South Kent. Uh, just take a listen. The next station is South Kensington. Change for the Piccadilly line. Exit for the Museum and Royal Albert Hall. Um, and what that means is the uh, Great Exhibition of 1851. Um, and that, is, that is, um, actually has a reference to the museums and Royal Albert Hall here, because I think of Prince Albert, uh, and the, many of those museums and, um, are named after him. That is why, um, um, there's, because there's a lot of collection of museums here, they say it as the museums and Royal Albert Hall. And you've got a disuse platform here as well. That was used for the district railway.
Yeah, and you got a, a rather big bay, um, disuse, another disused platform there as well. Um, and actually, um, there used to be another set of bay platforms right in the middle of the island platform. Um, that was used by the Metropolitan Railway. Um, and when the Circle Line was shown as a separate identity to the Met and District Lines, um, those bay platforms were no longer needed. And, um... They were located in this area here, where I'm standing. In this area, here. Right, I'll head down to the Piccadilly line because there's something quite interesting. So the, the District Railway actually planned an express line from here to the City of London with a stop at um, the at Embankment Station, which was formerly known as Charing Cross. Because of that Charing Cross, Trafalgar Square, Strand, Strand um, um, situation. But that's another story. So apparently, um, South Kensington Piccadilly Line was closed last year uh, to allow for escalator upgrades. So. In fact, the platforms here are super imposed, meaning one is on top of the other. Labyrinth is here, 235. It's 270. Apparently the third train is heading short to South Harrow. That is a real rarity. And um, that end of the station, uh, you'll notice that the Piccadilly line actually takes some um, like four, like two left turns and two right turns because it makes that sound um, as um, it moves around the beds. So. Take a listen. There it is. Eastbound platform, and this is actually what makes the Piccadilly line the tourist underground line uh, because most tourists actually use the Piccadilly line more often than any other line because it actually connects the tourist attractions of Buckingham Palace or um, London Transport Museum, or in here at South Kensington, you have the museums here and the, the Royal Albert Hall here. That's, that's why the Piccadilly line is so busy. All right, um, so on the platform walls here, you've got this beautiful artwork here. Of a, a, I think a, um, a big cat.
Here's the outside of South Kensington Station, which has its station awning um, removed. As you can see that it just says Kensington on it, which is bad. And we also have the mural, so the Metropolitan District Railway. And you also have the station building here, uh, designed by Leslie Green when the Piccadilly line came through here. And actually, there's a thin house um, just there, down there, um, um, which is number five Thurlow Square. Um, and actually, the reason why it's thin is because of the railway, uh, which um, is um, down behind this wall. Uh, so if you peek over this wall here, you can get a good view of the of South Kensington station down below. And just there is the thin house. Sir. Okay, we got a district or circle line from Korea. This is the train I'll be getting on to get to my next station, Gloucester Road. And so here we are, I think at the most beautiful station in the suburb of Kensington, and that is Gloucester Road, um, which is um, an interchange between the Circle District and Piccadilly Lines, um, but rather linely, um, like, I don't know if that's a word, but um, it, the tube map actually lies to you because um, Gloucester Road is not marked as an interchange on the tube map, but despite it, it is, being, it is an interchange, um, and actually, one like a cool th feature about the station is that um, Circle Line trains have their own dedicated platform there. Um, and the subsurface bit of the station has a, a rather odd number of platforms, with this platform here being used for the all westbound district line services, um, that one there for all Circle Line services via Paddington, um, and the, the one far that way is used for all eastbound district and circle lines. So, so one of the platforms is sampling both, while two of them are used um, um, with one of them by the district line and one of them by the circle line. So this would make it like quite congested on the eastbound platform. And just add a fourth platform! Um, it's not that hard to install it here, but you, you, you have to rather demolish that, unfortunately, and just move it. All right, and what I mean by um, a beautiful station is because you got these wonderful down lights lighters here um, and you got a, rather an old light box style um, on uh, platform one 
And so in order to cross platforms, you have to go up the stairs and then down here. Um, no, uh, because the central line um, today is shot between North Acton and Ely, Broadway, because of a signal failure. There's a good service on the line, on the rest of the line. Here, you get a rather obstructed view of the station. And you've got uplighters um, on the staircases. So, and I think we'll head to the uh, Piccadilly line platforms next. There's 236 of 270. So we'll head to the uh, Piccadilly line platforms. And so, um, so um, here are the express lifts which lead down to the uh, Piccadilly line. And here's the, uh, um, another spiral staircase here. Okay. This staircase has 87 steps. That's equivalent to a 15-story building. Piccadilly line. This one. Here's the maps. We've got the two branches to keep on Arts Bridge. We have this one for the Park as well. So you notice like you've got beautiful tiles here um, and this is actually uh, in, back in UERL days um, like you know Charles Tyson Yerkes who owned it um, and anyway this is back in uh, UERL days and actually if you just um, in here you've got a beautiful sign which says to Hammersmith that it's cool this that, that dates from 1906 when the Piccadilly line first terminated at Hammersmith We've got a beautiful sign which says Gloucester Road, also in URL branding. Obviously, you've got the modern signs here. Is it? Please stand back the We've got the train for Oxbridge coming. actually runs at Gloucester Road, um, they actually do mark a, um, an interchange um, verse on it. And so they say change here for the circle line. So here's the uh, station building, uh, designed by Leslie Green of uh, Gloucester Road. And um, here's the Metropolitan District Railway Station building. So these were separate companies, but when London Transport uh, was established in 1933, um, the, um, the stations were amalgamated into one. So actually one brilliant fact about the station is the roof here. Um, so the roof was actually added in the 1990s uh, to construct a shopping centre above the station. So, yeah, that's cool. Alright, so once you exit the lift, um, you'll, head, you'll head through this corridor here. Um, and here are the steps, uh, 87, which is 
put it into a 15 story building. district line trains. Um, but we're on, we came on the Piccadilly line because um, we haven't seen this line for a long time. Um, and after our school, the Piccadilly line just pops back into the open to reach Barron's Court, which should be a pure district line station and not a Piccadilly station as well. for Wimbledon which left. So the hub of the district line um, has only like four platforms. Got one platform one there for Wimbledon, uh, platform two for Richmond and Union Broadway, uh, platform platforms uh, two and one. Um, actually you got them all. So these are uh, three and four and then over there is one and two. So one and two is for um, um, trains to Barking and Upminster. Um, actually and this is this thing actually regards back to my uh, Kensington line thing. So um, basically if the Kensington line um, was to be a separate identity to the district line, then Earl's Court station uh, would have to be upgraded to cope with the amount of passengers changing trains. So. So from um, here, you can also get a really good, beautiful view of the train shed. What a delayed Ealing Broadway service. We've got a train for Dagenham East on platform two. So right above the um, co uh, cost platform maps, we've also got a wonderful clock here. It's the self-winding clock of New York. All right, so here's the ticket hall of Earl's Court, the main one. And there is the express lift down to the Piccadilly line. Um, but this way is the, um, the exit bit. And then behind that is actually where you enter the lift. Uh, yeah. And we just exited the barrier. And something interesting I want to show you. We've got this, like, um, a more modern tiling here. We've got this brown tiling here, too. A beautiful um, district railway station building. That's cool. And for some reason, they replaced um, um, where um, Earl's, the Earl's Court station label was into underground. I think that was a good decision. Because it gives the station a nice look. And the only like Earl's Court um, name that you see on the building is that one there, the District Railway um, Tiles. 
Alright, so if you walk past um, through Earl's Court Station every day, um, you, many of you will be familiar with the main entrance, which is um, down there, but there's actually um, a side entrance around the back this way. Um, this is the uh, Warwick Road exit, um, which is um, on this elevated walkway. Um, and actually, this is quite similar to what Northfields used to have. And I, I just saw a, um, a tube carriage of an S-Stock train, and it just looked so grubby on the outside. Like, the its paint was peeling. It should really be cleaned. Um, anyway, this is the uh, Warwick Road exit. This is the original one. So this is the original exit of Earl's Court Station. Here's the sneaky side entrance to Earl's Court Station um, and it's not really impressive to look at but um, it's on this road here. Um Alright, so that train down there, the one towards Wimbledon, is what I'll take to take, um, which will take me to my next station, which will be West Brompton. So here we are at the next station, which is West Brompton, um, or really the penultimate station on our journey. Um, and this station is served by the uh, Kensington Line, or the Wimbledon branch of the District Line, um, and it's also served by the Overground and National Rail Services, um, if, you're, um, if you're waiting on those platforms. And actually, an odd thing about the announcement, um, as you travel on the s stock. Um, is that they say London Overground and National Rail Services, including services to Olympia London. Um, I actually want that, including services to blah blah blah, um, just to be removed from that because it's not really important at all. Um, but anyways, um, and you've got a beautiful train shed up there, um, and that is the way up to the uh, concourse or ticket hall. And um, to interchange between the Overground and National Rail, uh, you would need to touch a um, touch the Oyster or contactless card um, on the on one of the pink readers here, um, and because you, you're changing between modes here. All right, so um, we're, we're now going to exit the station, but there's something uh, first I want to show you about the roundels here. Um, there is some um, this roundel here, uh, which you um, have the special W um, crossed over, and this was actually first mentioned in Secrets of the District Line. Um, and then it was mentioned again in the um, Jeff Marshall's End of the Line Edgeware episode. Um, and so, yeah, you've got a litter bin set. Unfortunately, not blowing in the breeze. And um, just down there is the London Overground. And um, you've also got this uh, linking bridge here, which connects, the, which connects the two sets of platforms together. You've got a view of the district line. And here is a view of the overground platform. So here is the um, the linking bridge, which connects the the two sets of platforms together, um, and it slightly wobbles if there's um, a lot of passengers on it. Um, and then there's also lift, which has some um, step-free access down to the platform. So, um, and um, yeah, and actually the overground actually have their own separate entrance, um, which is um, which is right here. Yeah, but and there is also um, one with the gate line. So, but we're gonna go through the gate line and not the um, and not the overground entrance. And um, I already mentioned these pink readers at Olympia, so I'm not gonna talk about them again. And um, here again is the district line or Kensington line, 
and you got um, that train there is not even for Wimbledon. In fact, it's only for Parsons Green. That's a real rarity on the district as it turned line, so. Yeah, that platform is for Wimbledon, and this platform here um, is for Central London and Earl's Court. So. Here's another view of the, um, the station, with a, with a, a footbridge um, slightly obstructing it, but it is connected with the station building, with the main building. So here are all the destinations for platforms 3 and 4. If you want to read them, just pause the video and resume once you finish. got um, the labyrinth here which is number 127 in the sequence of 270. This one, I'm not going to do that 272 thing again. So here's the um, destination line map for the district line. As you can see it is quite out of date because um, you got a old DLR logo here. Um, that dates from 1987, and also you can see it at Bow Road. Um, and you also got a um, Westminster as a singular station. So if you want more information on the outdated signs, uh, check out Hugh Hillier's video on the um, outdated signs of the underground. Here's the gate line. So here is the station building of West Brompton Station. Not really impressive. And to the right, that way, is the entrance for the underground platform. That should be removed. So here is the entrance um, up to the overground platforms at West Brompton. And um, you got the oyster validators here and not a gate line, where, which should be removed, unfortunately. Um, and these gates here um, would need to be closed in order for this entrance to actually be closed um, permanently. And, um, and also the crucial thing that needs to be um, removed to have the entrance closed is the validators here. They need to be removed. The next, this is the next district line, so I will take to my final station, which is West Kensington. But I will change it Earl's Court, um, and this will actually be shown off screen. Here we are at uh, the final station um, in this video, which is West Kensington. Um, and the first thing you'll notice is the canopies here, um, which is like not really impressive um, because it's um, actually quite showing its age here. 
um, because you notice know, see the paint is peeling and it's starting to rust. Uh, um, but yeah, it is showing the district line colors on the poles here. Um, and actually, the Piccadilly line almost runs underneath the station, um, with it popping up to the surface just around the bend, um, and popping up to um, its next station which, on the Piccadilly line, which is Barons Court. But in my opinion, it should never be a Piccadilly line station. Um, and it should run express between Earl's Court and Hammersmith for the Piccadilly line. Um, but yeah, and the station is not that impressive, only having like two uh, side platforms. And it's quite boring um, as well because um, like you, you just have a, um, a, a turn out there which leads, I think, to nowhere. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that heads towards uh, High Street Ken or Olympia. But if, if I'm not right, let me know. Yeah, and then we've got um, tiles here in Piccadilly line uh, colors. Yeah, if you come here, you can just breathe fluffy oxygen here. You've just got more plants here. So here is the roundel of West Kensington. And West Kensington is actually often forgotten about um, um, by some people. Here are the steps here. And actually the suburb name of West Kensington um, and also this um, I mean the station name of West Kensington is not located in the suburb of Kensington uh, but since it has the suburb of Kensington I'm gonna count it on this list and actually the suburb was actually previously known um, as North End uh, um, and West Kensington the name actually it, um, got it got it from a marketing stunt uh, so that is um, quite unusual so here is the station building of um, West Kensington Tube Station um, and also the, the label um, is slightly off um, of the awning, it has to be just moved um, right here um, just to make it be in the middle um, and um, down that way is the um, Piccadilly Line portal sir um, and then it um, surfaces with the district line uh, um, and you can see the Piccadilly line portals if you stand on this bridge. Uh. There's a Piccadilly line train in the distance just coming out of the portal. It's a Piccadilly line train going back into the tunnels. Here is West Kensington's gate line. And we'll head back into the station now and head home. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of how many stations are there in Kensington. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And yeah, I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.